All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Houston Rockets Daily. My name is Jackson, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about Jay Sean Tate. If you guys are new here, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for me. So we have a tweet here from Bordeaux NBA talking about an article that Kelly Ico, a Houston Rocket reporter, wrote for The Athletic. And here is a quote that was drawn out of it, which is, it's extremely, extremely exciting news, or at least promising news. Quote unquote, the consistent word I've gotten this summer is Tate's three ball is looking much better, especially in the corners. I think Tate is going to surprise a lot of people. Man, this is music to my ears. So not only this season, this offseason, do we sign one of the only moves we made. We re-signed Jay Sean Tate on just a little over $7 million a season. Guys, Jay Sean Tate who averaged 12, 5.5, and, and 3 this past season with about a steal per game, it's highway robbery for a guy like Tate. You know, Even if he's coming off of the bench, to me, he's a better Royce O'Neal. He's a more... Honestly, I think if he were to develop a three-point shot, he'd be like a better Jay Crowder even. Or, I mean, I don't want to like disrespect Jay or Jay Sean because... Crowder's good in his own regards. Tate's good in his own regards. So maybe that wasn't the best comparison. I apologize. But hopefully you kind of get what I'm getting at. Where if Jay Sean Tate can just develop a three-point shot. Because this past season he only shot, uh, we, we got it right here, 31.2% from downtown. So first half of the season he shot just over 28.5% from downtown. And then once the All-Star break hit, what we saw from Steven Silas and the Houston Rockets was more of a jump to the younger town. So we saw a lot of the younger guys get as much run as possible. You know, Wood was shut down, and you just saw guys like Jalen Green really be given kind of full control or like the green the green light to do whatever he really wanted to do, like as far as shooting the ball goes. So 22 games post all-star break his points went down about three points per game from 12 and a half to nine and a half but he averaged a whole less than four percent or oh my god bro this video is turning into a freaking nightmare jay sean tate averaged less than four minutes per game than he did in the first half of the season so he was only looking at about 20 three 24 minutes a night somewhere in between that so nothing crazy definitely more of a bench roll and the good news is this and i know i've made a video on this but i wanted to retouch on it because of kelly Iko's article he shot 38.2 percent from downtown in the second half of the season for houston now i don't think jay sean tate is gonna take especially being at 6-4 i don't think he's gonna take the leap of a julius randall where we saw julius randall in a contract year turn into all nba third team man was making three something he'd never really done in his career he was knocking down mid-rangers julius randall a couple of seasons ago offensively was just cash money this past year we saw little regression although for the most part i do think julius randall is a all-star caliber all-star talent basketball player i don't know if we'll get there with jay shante i don't even need us to get there with jay shante Every team needs role players, and the good thing with Jay is he does everything. He does literally every single role. He can pass. He can rebound. He can score in the paint. He can defend multiple positions. He's good in transition. He's a great culture piece. He's a phenomenal hard worker. Jay Sean Tate's just a player that you want on your, your roster. So the fact that we were able to get him for over $7 million, just, just over $7 million a year for the next three years, the way I'm viewing it is highway robbery. I literally think it's highway robbery. This man is going to continue to work. He's going to continue to grind. And who knows, by the end of his contract, I'm not talking anything crazy statistically or analytically, although you know I, I, I wouldn't mind that one bit. But the impact he's going to have on Houston, it's going to go outside as it always has. It's going to go outside the box score. It's going to be outside the stat line. You know, if you watch Houston Rockets content, I don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about people watching Rocket games on this channel. But like, you know, if I'm talking about it on my show or my main channel, you know, it's hard to fully appreciate what Jay Sean Tate does for this ball club unless you're like a Houston Rockets fan. So. I think getting him at $7 million a year is phenomenal. He shot 38% from downtown, which is really the icing on the cake. If he can get to 
anywhere around 35% from downtown this upcoming season. That would really open up the floor. We saw a lot of issues with him and Christian Wood and Daniel Tice whenever Tice got the nod, which we saw way too much at the beginning of the season. You'd have Tate playing the three there. And, you know, someone who's shooting 28% from downtown, it was almost every single possession he got the ball. I got a text from Joey Badass. Let's go. Dropped an album yesterday. And it's an automated text. But when you have... Christian Wood down in there in the paint, even if Wood's out trying to stretch the floor, you still got a big-ass body in, down there in Tice. And we know, we, <laughs> bro, if you watched the games last year, you know you know Tice loves a good three-point shot, but it was the lane was so clogged so much of the time. And Jay Sean Tate playing four years of center at Ohio State, he is really good down below in the paint. So he didn't really have a shot. He didn't really have a mid-ranger or at, it was very inconsistent. And you'd see players, you'd see teams just kind of disregard him when he had the ball and he was outside the three-point shot. Like, yeah, sure, Jay, shoot the ball. Like, be my guest. Take this three. You can do whatever the hell you want out there. So it did make our spacing brutal and it made the chemistry worse. And, you know, it just was unideal. So this is all great news. And, you know, I know Houston, we have two multi-versatile forwards now with Tari Eason and Jabari Smith Jr. So I'm still thinking eventually one of those two becomes our long-term three. But, you know, Jay Sean Tate offensively and defensively, he brings us a lot of versatility. So I love that we re-signed him. I love that it was a very team-friendly contract, and I'm glad he's excited to be back as well. So that's it for today. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, going on a trip here with Swaggy. So you know, hopefully we go live or at least make a video together, but you might see like, you know, only one or two videos this week. So appreciate you guys. I'll catch you on the flip.